If you're someone like me, there is one particular reason why I would omit every single flaw of this kit just to have it in my collection. Akimbo shotguns. Need I say more? What is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the P-Bandai High Grade Crossbone Gundam X04 Cloth from Mobile Suit Crossbone Gundam Ghost. But before I begin, let's take a rough dive into the lore of the X0 and why I named it the Lost Crossbone. It was supposed to be the original third unit of the F97 series instead of the Crossbone X3, however it was assembled later than the X1 and X2. While the aforementioned brother units made it to the Mother Vanguard, the X0 went missing during transport as the transport ship was destroyed in an unknown accident. Drifting in space for 20 years, it was finally picked up by Bland May and Tobia, uh, uh, I mean uh, Curtis Rothkoll, after a search and finally given a formal code, X0, and named Ghost, as it was a crossbone Gundam few knew existed. A thing to note in the inbox contents is the suspicious O1 and N1 plates, which contain the parts for the Butterfly Buster B and the Kujaku Multipurpose Assault Weapon respectively. There are gates for them to separate the weapons from the main plates, which means Bandai has all the necessary preparations to make the Phantom Gundam by extending the O1 plate for joints and gating out the Buster for a duplicate, and isolating the Kujaku parts for the same reasons. Although chances are slim, the prep work is done, so get on with it Bandai! With that out of the way, here is the kit itself assembled with all stickers applied, and it can cause some heads to turn. While the proportions look accurate albeit with the head having the typical, more cartoonish aesthetics of the high grade compared to the real grade, the injected plastic can cause a little bit of a stir in the community, and this kit is no exception with the metallic injection silver and red making up most of the body colors. While the only flat colors being the white and the yellow for the body, the prune frame, and of course, the stickers, of which there are plenty. You get the white tips of the V-fin, which do wrap around the safety knobs, the eyes, the clavicle beam vulcans, the circular diesels on the front and the back of the shoulders, the crest on the crotch, the top of the knees, the eight verniers on the back bones, the eyes on the shoulder skulls, and finally, everything that is not white or silver on the full cloth mantle, which includes the red veins, the grey blotches, and all of the bloody verniers. As you may expect, all the stickers that fold over small and narrow surfaces don't adhere too well, and they are already peeling off despite it being 4 days old. You still need to paint the forehead skull white and the red veins on the sides of the head to make it look 100%, and while I may have a gripe with the skull, the red face veins are a very minor issue and can be excused for being left out. I would also recommend filling the eye and nasal cavities of the skulls with black to make them look less bare. You can say what you want about the metallic silver and red, but they're undeniably hard to work with as sanding blood marks will leave a darkened spot like the one on the cloak here, and it would make treating the seam lines on the rear legs all the more troublesome as this kit is not undergated. Straight build presentation is decent at best if you like the metallic injection colors, but I would recommend painting in the small details the stickers cover. Articulation starts with a double polycap ball joint in the head, so it has pretty good maneuverability, including the chicken neck, and it can rotate a full 360 despite the full cloth pieces. Now the full cloth in the chest are on ball joints, but they do get loose after you mess around with them for a while, so be careful with that and fortify them if needed. The arms are on a swing out polycap, which is pretty nice, and they can rotate all the way around not impeded if you take off the cloak, there is nothing in the shoulder so the arms can go perpendicularly no problem, rotation above the elbow, and a double jointed elbow which is pretty nice, and a ball jointed wrist. But all of that is just gonna get way too troublesome when you have the cloak on, just because when you hit the cloak it is gonna shift up and eventually dislodge. Now the waist over here is on a double ball joint so you can rotate it along the peg, you can rotate it all the way in theory. You have quite a bit of crunches which is pretty good for pulling off poses. And the front skirts can be separated with semi-ill effects, they get loose after a little while. The 
side skirts can move up like that and the back skirt is always paralyzed and there you go the cloak has just fallen off because i messed with the right arm now the legs can do the funky dance albeit relatively hard they can move forward over 90 degrees go backwards quite decently for a paralyzed back skirt and go out into the full splits they have a thigh swivel and a double jointed knee which is pretty good now the ankle armor over here is on the ball joint towards the side so it can bob about and the feet can move forwards relatively good backwards decently side to side rotation and rolling thanks to the ball joint now the back bones over here can spin because they're on a circular peg and if you don't want to be that ridiculous you can just move these on the ball joint and of course the thrusters over here can be shifted but they are connected through friction so be careful when you try to adjust them and finally the full cloth pieces are on their individual ball joints they are connected pretty tightly so they can roll without any problem and they can move out to allow for clearance for any arm movement the latin articulation of the crossbone gundam x0 full cloth is definitely good because it does reuse the joints from the x1 however the full cloth equipment is guaranteed to get in your way and sometimes be incooperative because they will fall off all the time if you mess with them for gimmicks you can take off the back bones and stick it onto the core fighter block to form the x zero's core fighter details need to be painted in but at least the option is there moreover you get an alternate face plate for the heat radiation face open form with a second pair of eyes as stickers to boot you can completely disassemble the head, or you can simply grab some tools and tug the face out from underneath, swap out the faceplate, and there you go. For weapons then, we start with the beam sabers. The handles can be stored anywhere, and there are a pair of custom beams for you to use with them. Stick them into the hands and pose them to your liking. Next up, we have the heat daggers. You can either stick the blades into the bottoms of the feet, or give it the handheld ones by sandwiching them into the hands. Thanks to the crossbow being a high grade, you can have all four deployed if you want to. Furthermore, we have the scissor anchors. They're basically an alternate skirt piece with a static anchor deployed connected to an adapter with the included wire. You can separate the wire into two and deploy one anchor at a time, and they thankfully don't get weighed down by gravity. Mind you, they don't have any dexterity, so they can't hold anything at all. The brand markers on the rear of the arm still function as they should by flipping forwards, but unfortunately you don't get the beam shield nor the beam spike in this kit to use them. Moving on, the eye field generators on the shoulders don't do anything there, but take them off and fold the teeth in, and you can stick them into the hand for cosmic punching gloves that also intimidate as a side effect. Moreover, we have the butterfly busters. More shotgun than buster rifle, they are still one of the coolest armaments in my opinion due to them being akimbo shotguns. There are no storage options for them which is a bit of a shame, so all you can do is sandwich them into the hands for use. You can also flip the gun up, take off the barrel and slide it into the hitch on the bottom, while getting rid of the connector to make space for the included beam, and there you have the saber mode of the butterfly buster. A creative means of switching between gun and sword, with minimum in-hand adjustments, and looking awesome while doing so. The upgraded variant, the Butterfly Buster B, does the same as the Butterfly Busters. Looking more like a flintlock, you still can't store it anywhere, which is still a bit of a shame, hence you can only sandwich it into the hand for use. Perform the aforementioned process as the shotguns, and use the same effect parts to switch it to Saber Mode. The more refined look makes this look cooler than the shotguns in this particular mode, but you only get one of these which means dual wielding is not an option. Finally, the signature Kujaku multi-purpose assault weapon. Being a combination of the Peacock Smasher and Muramasa Blaster, it aesthetically takes from the latter than the former without the handle detail and huge skull. And of course there are yellow details that needed to be painted in. The intrusive peg on the top allows the weapon to be stored on the side skirt and you can either sandwich it into the angle holding hand to fire it in the buster mode or remove the tip and bring in the effect parts used for the Buddha Masa Blaster for wild melee combat. You can put it into the smasher mode by taking the barrel off, rotating the handle, inserting a brace into the weapon, opening up the side blades and reattaching the barrel into the brace. Take the angled holding hand again and unleash a devastating widespread beam in the smasher mode. 
Moving on to the leftover weapons, you firstly get the Beam Zamber. Paint in the missing details to your own liking as the ghost doesn't use this weapon. Insert the Beam Cutlass Blade into the hold and sandwich it into the hand for use. You can also store it in the side skirt hardpoints. Secondly, the Beam Buster. You don't get the grenade for the barrel, but that's neither here nor there. Paint in the details as you see fit as the ghost doesn't use this weapon either. You can store it on the side skirts as well, and you can hold it in the specialized holding hands in either the right side or the left side. Flip the top panel of the buster up and the handle down, then adjust the guard of the zamber before connecting the two together and sandwiching into the angle holding hand to form the zam buster. Besides looking cool in poses, you can store the entire weapon on the side skirts with either peg on its side. Moreover, you get the peacock smasher. Missing details require painting and you can store it onto the side skirts or hold it in the normal hands for firing. Finally, the Muramasa Blaster. Missing details also require painting and you can store it onto the side skirts for future use. You can also bring in the beam effects for devastating strikes or the angled holding hand to fire it. For comparisons, here is the ghost with the normal Gundam. And while the scale does look appropriate, it's all the more astonishing how many weapons were integrated into and or arranged for this little guy. And finally, here is the ghost with my only other crossbones, the real great X1, and the Gundam Build Fighter Tri X1 Full Cloth. The ghost only has different colors, cloak pieces, weapons, and a different V-fin compared to the latter, while it is leagues behind the former in terms of aesthetics. Devoting a small session to the full cloth parts to answer some of your questions about them. Since the construction of every high-grade crossbone Gundam is universal, for the most part at least, of course you can put the full cloth onto the other units, but unfortunately, I don't have any of them so I am unable to demonstrate this to the full extent. Just remove the shoulder clip and the chest piece to retrofit the full cloth equipment, but you are stuck with the skull on the chest. However, you cannot convert this kit fully into the vanilla X0 Ghost, as while you do get the shoulder clips and the original collar, you don't get the chest pieces with no holes, nor that god awful plastic anti beam coating mantle. However, if you can look past that, I suppose it's possible to some extent. Besides, you can kind of mount the real great ABC mantle onto the ghost after you swapped in the original collar, but the head is only barely held on by the polycap as the neck it can barely reach the head. So it kind of works, but not quite. Finally, I did mention the cloak differences between the ghost and the X1, because the detail on the front cloak pieces of the ghost terminate sooner than the ones on the X1, as evidenced by the leftover parts here. And on top of getting this extra little bit of detail on the chest cloak pieces, the outer pieces are longer on the X0 when compared to the X1. Tiny differences that are barely noticeable, but I guess I can praise Bandai for their attention to detail in a weird, twisted way. Segway into the leftover parts from the cloak pieces, you also get the head fin on the X1 to go along with the leftover helmet in white. You do also have the original baskets of the X1 and finally, the aforementioned shoulder clips and collar are also included. To conclude my ghostly review, apart from the basics like the silhouette and engineering, the first major point is, the colors may be a turnoff. Like I said, metallic ingestion colors can turn some heads, and while the metallic silver and red are nowhere near as vomit inducing as the gold on, um, let's say, the high grade Hyakushiki Revive, it is still a hard finish to work with nonetheless, and the occasional swirls of paint can let sparks fly among people. Secondly, it is obscure. On top of the X0 Ghost, there isn't really other model kit released exclusively from Crossbone Ghost, not to mention the full cloth X0 doesn't even have its own wiki page. While it differs very slightly to the X1 full cloth, many people may not even know that the Ghost full cloth exists, so owning an obscure kit still earns you a bit of bragging rights. Thirdly, it gets more frustrating to pose over time. I have ruined the structural integrity of the full cloth equipment during the entire filming of this review. And because of how much the full cloth makes up the mass of the entire mobile suits, you're bound to run into it one way or another. Even if you take it off and put it back on, you're still gonna wear down the pegs and when you try to put it in the final pose for a display, you're gonna run into trouble because it's gonna dislodge constantly. Curse Bandai for not making a real grade 
Crossbone X14 Cloth. Finally, it is Premium Bandai. The ghost isn't a ghost yet per se, but getting them outside of the Premium Bandai webshop's coverage is still a tall order as it is often ludicrously priced. Even though I would give this kit a 6.5 out of 10, I'd still recommend you find a suitable price before purchasing this kit as it is not worth the sky-high prices scalpers are offering for it. So that about wraps it up for the review, tell me in the comments below what you think about this kit and thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment and also subscribe for more Gunplay reviews, Gunplay news and all that kind of stuff. Turn on notifications for future content alerts if you haven't and I'll see you all in the next video.